So they finna break down Creed three. Um, I seen it pretty good. Um, it was not as long as I thought it would be. It's a pretty short movie, probably like an hour thirty minutes, something like that. Um, so the story, but behind this movie is I'm just going to say revenge. Um, because you know you had Michael B. Jordan. Uh, it's showing his past. So basically, he, he when he was a kid, he had an older, I guess you could say, an older guy he looked up to, and the older guy he looked up to, uh, basically raised him to be the great boxer he is in a sense. Well, he inspired Michael B. Jordan to become a boxer in the first place. Um, so what happened was Michael B. Jordan ended up getting getting them into some trouble because Michael B. Jordan decided he wanted to beat up some old guy in front of a, a convenience store or something like that. Police pulled up because this boy had a gun. Police pulled up or whatever and was about to arrest him and shit. Michael B. Jordan took off, left him. His boy got arrested. It was locked up for like 20 years. You know what I'm saying? He was already like 17 at the time, so he was pretty much older. And then when he got out, he wanted to, you know, still fulfill his dream as a boxer. He still wanted to become a champion, world champion. And at the time, Michael B. Jordan was the world, was the world champion, so to say, but retired. So he had a world champion fighting for him. He ended up fighting that world champion, winning, becoming the world champion. And then they ended up having this big old boxing match at the end. You know how the movies go, man. really shows in this movie and gave me personally the same ambition and appreciation as the first Creed movie did. I love this movie. I loved all the parallels to the previous films in the Creed and Rocky mm -hmm. franchise. I agree with Jessica. The fight, choreo, and chemistry between the leads make this movie a knockout. Yes, yes, yes. And without further ado, I'm Jessica Clemens here with my best friend in the entire world, uh -huh. the entire multiverse, Tommy Bechtold. And we're going to break down Creed 3 for you. So if you haven't seen it, we're going to be spoiling. This is just your warner. This is your warning. Yes. <laughs> we're huge fans of the Creed movies. Tommy's a huge Rocky fan, so it made sense for us to just break down this bad boy together. We love Adonis. Mm. We love Apollo. So let's get it started. One of my favorite parts of the Creed movies are the time jumps that are pretty seamless. We learn that Adonis and Jonathan Major's character, Damian Anderson, go way back to being brothers in a group home and their foster father Leon beating them as a child. When put into a sticky situation Adonis beat up Leon outside of a convenience store and was immediately jumped by Leon's friends so Damien pulled a gun on them but the cops arrived. They took Damien away and Adonis ran. Damien spent 18 years in prison watching Adonis become oh, what he always 18. wanted to be, the world's greatest boxer. So the entire relationship between Adonis and Damien stems from the unresolved pent up anger due to their past. Ding ding round two fast forward 15 years or so <laughs> later and after beating Common, the Irish boxer from the first movie, Adonis goes into retirement. Quick note, it's unbelievable how much Adonis mm. looks and moves like Apollo in this movie. Damn, it was like seeing Carl Weathers in 1983 all over again. Besides Conlon, we also have Bianca, played by Tessa Thompson, Little Duke, played by Wood Harris, Marianne Creed, played by Felicia Rashad, my man Stitch, who's in every single movie, whose name is Stitch in real life. We even had Victor Drago himself returning. Last time we saw Drago was, of course, in Creed 2. We also get cameos from real-life fighters Canelo Alvarez, Terrence Crawford is Nightmare, and Jessica McCaskill. As for Donnie, he's Done. He's now setting up fights, training new boxers, and being a phenomenal dad. That is until Damien shows up. Yes, and like Jonathan Majors Kang, Damien has lost a lot of time. He wants to make up for that time. This is an important thing in the movie because Adonis is aging. He's in retirement. It's crazy because they're using an old, young looking ass nigga. <laughs> A young, old looking at me. Damien lost his time that? in prison. He wants it back. They both spent so right? much time angry and confused at each other and blinded who they were. Cooler has always been good at writing. Him. This has always been good at writing villains because they're not really villains. We see Damien's point of view and justification. We know the fuel and passion he has for boxing. It wasn't a dream, it was his dream. If you lost all that time protecting your brother to see how far he's come, doing what you dreamt of doing every day from your youth to being locked in a cell, you're gonna be mad. You'll be confused about where to put that anger. This motivation really pushed Damien until the end of the movie, and I think he's such a well written character that's just so blinded by his own ambition. Ding, ding, ding! Round three! He had reason to be upset, Jessica! Why not? Damien reached out to Adonis multiple times, but Adonis never received any letters because sweet, sweet Marianne was keeping the two separated. To rekindle an old friendship, Adonis allows Damien to train at his boxing gym under Little Duke. It's not long before Damien does something dangerous when Duke and Adonis realize they may have made a mistake. 
and mistakes were made. Adonis is also trying to set up the fight of the century, bringing back Victor Drago, his newfound ally, to fight Felix Chavez, played by real-life fighter Jose Benavides, a former welterweight champion who actually lost only two fights in his career, one to exactly. Terrence Crawford, who plays Nightmare in this movie, Adonis' is sparring partner. There's a little Easter egg right in the breakdown for you. Chavez has been <laughs> training at his gym under Duke, seizing this opportunity that's not revealed until later. Damien gets one of his friends from prison to fracture Drago's hand and arm at Bianca's label party. With no one left to fight Felix, Adonis recommends using Damien, which is not that equal of a fight seeing their clear difference in age, but as Adonis refers to it as an underdog story, even... That was the part that I missed. The setup. He had one of his dudes from jail come fuck up the champ. So he can go fight for the belt. That's crazy. Dropping Rocky's name, uh, everyone agrees to it. I would also like to add, because this is just me, I got really excited about this. The singer of the label party is Kalani. Yes. And I guess in the theater out loud just That's because crazy. I love her so much. Uh, moving on. Felix gets his ass whooped. I know, I'm that. sorry. And sent straight to the hospital, leaving Dave. Nigga almost died. Damien, the victor, and baby, it only goes uphill from there. He's immediately seen as the true underdog. And Finna still off on his ass, a sad spoiler alert. But yeah, he finna still off on his ass because he on his high horse. He's living the most lavish life, but also talking mad shit on my boy Donnie every opportunity he gets, saying that he's a coward. He runs away from everything, comparing his career and retirement to the night he was arrested and Adonis dipped out. Right before this, though, Marianne unfortunately passes away. She didn't seem to be sick in Creed 2, but by Creed 3, she had a stroke, and everyone's constantly worried about. I said she was gonna die once he found out that. Once she found out that that boy hadn't came home and she was hiding them letters from Michael B, I knew she was going to die. Help. She suffers another stroke and slowly like passes that. away in her bed with Adonis holding her hand. Before going in a haze, she thinks she's talking. She shouldn't have been hiding them letters, though, because that's fucked up. Talking to Apollo and tells him once he left, she found the boy, the boy Adonis, who saved her, and he's amazing. So even in that fleeting moment, her last words were how proud she was of Adonis. I like to think he resembled Apollo so much in this movie that she literally thought she was talking to Apollo himself. Maybe believed she was already on the other side with him, and I think she went out happy. Aww. Ding, 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 round four. After the funeral, Adonis goes on first take with my boy Stephen A. Smith to challenge Damien to the ultimate showdown at Dodger Stadium in Leg Rocky. We love a training montage. Mm -hmm. It's giving mountains. It's giving hiking. We are pulling planes, punching trees, sparring with an old enemy turned friend. I'm in heaven. Now in the first movie, Rocky had Donnie running around Philly and chasing chickens. In the second movie, they drove to the desert to spar with other fighters, slam a sledgehammer into the ground, and literally shadow box a garbage fire. In Creed 3, years have passed, and he's pulling planes. This man has upgraded. He's sparring with Victor Drago. How crazy is that? The relationship between him and Drago in this movie makes me believe he'll be appearing in the fourth Creed. It's like he has unfinished business in every movie. Yes, and this fight, you guys, this is when I get serious. This fight is <laughs> Not only did Michael B. Jordan say it has anime-style inspiration, that little... They said that, they said that, bro, come in the ring like this, big and swole as fuck. <laughs> the nigga look like a real boss, bro. Like <laughs> but it feels exactly like the ancestral plane in Black Panther. Oh, this is Kugler doing it all over again. It really did. I love the fight depicted because ultimately it's not about the money or the people watching. It's the that fight was it. Not like how they took everybody. Look, just go look at them. These two boys settling this out for themselves and proving something to one another. Once they're alone in the ring, smoke fills the stadium, yeah, the air go. turns gray, and the silence is just so loud. You can yeah, only hear the swings from their gloves until the Renaissance choral like vocals protrude. It's like watching a moving painting. The choreography feels like a dance and it's rhythmic and beautiful. Now, this is a rags and riches tale. Two boys now grown into angry men, angry at their past, angry at each other. So during this fight, they can't help but remember who they once were and their limitations. When flung against the rope, Damien's back presses against jail cell bars. Short glimpses of their younger selves flash on the screen. It's causing anxiety and we all feel claustrophobic, grieving their emotions, but still focused on the fight. It's always been about the fight, right? No, wrong. It's their relationship. Kugler has always been good at showing us black men celebrating their pride and resilience, but this time he showed us black men navigating relationships, trauma, and their emotions, which I really, really like. And thank God we might have come to a neutral conclusion because I can't stand these two brothers fighting. Anymore. No, no, they're too oh. handsome to fight. Like Jessica said, in a very anime-like finisher, Donnie knocks out Damien holding his championship status. Luckily, it feels like their friendship wasn't completely ruined after the fight when they have a small heart-to-heart -heart in the locker with their signature old-school handshake. Small tears run down their faces, and Donnie exits to celebrate with Bianca and Amara. Aww. 
So many great classic Rocky-esque moments in this film, much like Rocky III, when Rocky's former opponent and Adonis' father, Apollo Creed, helps Rocky defeat Mr. T, a.k.a. Clover Lang. Victor Drago is in this movie to help Adonis win this fight. Now, the Adelphi gym in the movie is littered with old posters of Adonis and Apollo's fight. Adonis' childhood room has a Naruto poster. Michael B. Jordan is an anime nerd, so this is obviously a nod to that. Adonis gets his Rocky running up the stairs moment by sprinting up the Hollywood Hills and celebrating above the Hollywood sign, much like Rocky. Rocky 3, Adonis, like Rocky has retired from fighting, is now living the high life, only to be brought out of retirement by a rough and tumble brawler of an opponent. Adonis' comeback is fueled by grief, much like Rocky after Mick dies. Now, Dane beats Chavez so badly he has to be hospitalized. It's a slightly more mild version of Drago killing Apollo in Rocky 4. Absolutely. And you guys, that's it for our little video, our little breakdown on Creed 3. Can you they gave us a little bit of everything in Creed 3. <laughs> I can't wait to give y'all that John Wick 4 reaction, bro. I ain't going to see that. I'm going to wait till it come out on Amazon Prime. I love to buy movies so I could keep them, you feel me? But, bro. John Wick 4? I said, I said 3. John Wick 4? Bro. When that bit come out, well, when I get that, I'm reacting to that for sure. But anyways, it's been me, it's been good, it's been easy, it's been breezy. I love y'all, y'all love me, I hope. Let's keep continuing to run up these numbers, man. I'm trying to be a stay-at-home dad. If I can make 2000 a month, we in there. I'm almost at 1000 something, over 1000 some subscribers. I got 1000 subscribers. If all my subscribers send me $2 a month, at the same time, I'll be making two bands a month. I won't never have to go back to work. I won't be rich. I won't be wealthy. But I'll be living, taking care of my daughter, enjoying life. Anyways, man, I appreciate everything y'all do. Peace out. Send, send, send some donations for your boy. I'll put the cash app in the description.